Hello and welcome to Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. A weekly podcast and YouTube channel where we discuss all things Wrexham AFC from the point of view of long-term fans and new fans. So sit back, put your feet up, relax and let's get stuck in. Hello and welcome back to episode 114 of Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. Hello. Bonjour. Hello. You okay? Yeah, you seem a bit moody. What's wrong? Uh, I get a bit stressed when there's a lot going on and there's a lot going on and it <laughs> does me head in. My sweet spot is nothing going on. That's my sweet spot. We went out on, f- we're doing the house up. Uh, we, did the, we went out on Friday, comedy gig, really good, enjoyed it. Um, then Saturday, football, we're going out again today. We had an interview that we were supposed to be doing tonight, but we've now had to move it. Um, yeah, just I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of a lot going on. It stresses me out and I just don't like it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's me. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it, uh, you know, decent week though. Good, good week. We've NFL's back, uh, which is a, a big plus for me. Yep. And I'm sure to lots of other, we have quite a lot of American listeners and the listeners around the world, um, which I'm sure are into the NFL. Not so good seeing Rob's Eagles win. Nah, no. Not, not, I bet it was for Rob, though. I'm sure it was for Rob. Not, <laughs> not so much for me. Um, and watching um, Saquon score touchdowns for the Eagles made me a little bit sick in my mouth. But apart from that, it's back. So, you know, that's, that's a big plus. We're trying to get Rob on the, uh, on the podcast and you saying that you I don't just, like the Eagles. I just hate the team that he supports. So, uh, so there we go. Still love you, Rob. Uh, all the same, but there we go. <laughs> Okay, so on this week's show, we answer some of your questions that you so kindly sent in. Um, We're going to talk about our game against Shrewsbury, which was immense. Um, We're going to look ahead at the Bristol Street Motors game against Salford on Tuesday. And uh, normally we would look ahead at um, the next game, but our next game is on a Monday. So... Against Birmingham. Yeah, against Birmingham. So it's, it's a bit weird for us because our format has always been game on Saturday... Record on Sunday, edit on Sunday, release on Monday. Yep. That's been the format since we've started and we haven't deviated from that. That that works for us and hopefully it works for you as well. I but think everyone looks forward to Mondays. They do. But obviously now um, Sky have stuck their um, uh, beaky noses into uh, the EFL. Um, some games are moving about a little bit. Um, uh, this is one of our games that is moving. It's moved to a Monday night. Um Kickoff no is 8 p.m. Uh, now our podcast usually comes out at 6 p.m. So it seems a little silly uh, to release a podcast uh, pretty much at, that, not yeah. just on the day, pretty much as Wrexham are about to play. Oh yeah, we'll release it then. It seems silly. Well, they've so, still got an hour in between six and eight to listen to yeah, it. But yeah, yeah, loads of people just at the ground listening like yeah, that. But any, yeah. anyway, so we thought it would make sense to move next week's show forward today uh, to Sunday. So next week's show will be released on Sunday. At 6 p.m., same as same as it, it normally would be on a Monday, uh, but it will be next Sunday. Um, it just gives, it, it means we can properly look into Birmingham. We've got some guests coming on who are Birmingham fans, and it just means that we can, you know, we can spend a little bit of time focusing on the Birmingham game a little bit uh, without sort of cramming it into this show uh, when we're not playing them for another week so Mm. um yeah we thought it made sense to move it forward so episode 115 will be out on sunday at 6 p.m sunday the 15th if you say so well it is oh oh, yeah okay all right so that's (laughs) that's what we're doing uh that's our that's our plan uh uh, for next week so yeah okay let's let's move on anyway um if you would like to support the show, uh, you can do. You can buy us a coffee. Our Buy Me A Coffee page is buymeacoffee.com forward slash me the wife. Um, 
Special thank you this week uh, to Sarah, who bought us some coffees. Um, we did have somebody else as well, but that was uh, that was quite last minute. So if you if you just want to check that while I... I'll pad and fill. You'll pad and fill. I'll pad and fill. fill. Um, we do have... Okay, I've got uh, it. <laughs> We do have, um, we can um, reply to everybody who makes, uh, who buys us a coffee with a video. Unfortunately, for the last week, that feature hasn't been working. So, for us, anyway. But for, for us, yeah. <laughs> so we haven't been able to uh, send video messages to any of the people who had bought us a coffee the week before, unfortunately. Um I think it's back up and working again now. I think so, so, so we're we're going to get round to doing all of them um, at some point. But that's just more stressful, me. To when we're going to fit that in, but we'll get that done at some point. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's why some people might be sitting there wondering why they haven't had a video. That's that's the reason why. So, so. we've had, as mentioned, Sarah. So thank you very much, Sarah, and also Richard O'Brien. Um, and he put a little note on there. Who's the real expert? 3-0 predictions. Oh, my Good God. Good one. How many times is this going to come up today? We did a live after the game yesterday <laughs> and it, it was just full of people asking who got the prediction right? Who got the prediction That'll right? That'll be me. That'll be me. It's boring now, though, isn't it? If it was you that had won it, you'd be basking in the glory. I've nearly knocked your phone off twice you now. Know. I reckon by the end of the show, I will have knocked it off onto the floor. Not on purpose. That sounded like I was going. That I was saying to you because you were going on about winning the prediction <laughs> yeah. that I am purposely going to knock your phone off. I'm not, uh, but I, it, it might happen okay, at okay. some point. Okay. Anyway, should we talk about shoes? Bree, Let's talking talk about you getting about your Shrewsbury. bloody prediction right. Three 0 Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I am now currently off the mark. 1 0. I thought you were going to say, I am in the lead like it's some big thing. Well, You've like, only got one. Te well, technically, I am in the lead. You are in the lead. If you want to be, you know. Yes. Yeah, all right. Okay. Anyway, um, so big derby. Um, I say big derby. It's not. It's not our biggest derby. It's we haven't got many clubs around here, to be honest. So you know, our, our big derby is Chester. You know, cross border derby just down the road. But as they're in the uh, National League North, they're in some donkey league way back behind us. So that we're not we're not playing them anytime soon. So yeah, Shrewsbury and sort of Tranmere, they're they're close. Uh, you know, and we consider them as as sort of derbies. Um, 30-odd miles, I think it is, to Shrewsbury. 30, 40, something like that. So, yeah, so they're just down the road, so yeah. it, it is a derby. It had quite a big feel to it, didn't it, it during did. the day? It did, You went out Saturday morning, didn't you? I did. I went looking for lamps and cushions. Yes. <laughs> Lamp shades and cushions. I, I was, I couldn't, could I? I couldn't do that. No. Uh, I'm busy, busy with uh, stuff. What, playing FIFA? Yeah, there was that. Yeah. I, I had other stuff going on, though, you know. Uh, other stuff that meant I couldn't go and buy lamps <laughs> yeah. and cushions and all that but sort of thing. Anyway, so um, where I where I went, it took me past the uh, the race course and the train station, which uh, you know those of you who know you know where those are kind of situated. So I was going over the bridge and the where the train obviously um, arrives. There's like some steps leading up and. Basically, I drove past at, I think it was quarter past 11 Ish, in yeah. the morning and there was a rock load of Shrewsbury fans. Shrewsbury fans. Shrewsbury. Um, I like that word. Getting off the train and they were being, um, they were very loud. Um, even though I was in my car, I felt a little bit intimidated <laughs> and I rang Ryan straight away. Just, yeah, I was, yeah. Um, and they were getting police escorted. Um, and like when we go away, I think there's always like a dedicated pub um, for away fans. Um, and we're not sure which pub it was this well, time it, around. It, it, the last couple of years, it's been the Ironworks in Wrexham. Uh -huh. But I think, they've, I think they've switched it to the rocking chair, which is a little bit closer. Um, but they obviously get escorted down to that pub. Um, not every set of fans get escorted, by the way, just in case anyone's wondering. It's just ones where there is a potential that Risk. maybe there could be a little bit of trouble, local Which derby, all that sort of thing. baffles me, to be honest, because at the end of the day, we're all going there for one thing, to watch our team play and win. Obviously, Shrewsbury didn't get that chance because they were rubbish. But, um, yeah, so it was very intimidating um, seeing all these fans. Um, they were... 
pretty much all of them were in black and <laughs> it just it, it was it was really scary and then there was like a ruck load of police walking um i've just put my hands across there yeah so the sound might go off because we've been told something about that yeah so we, yeah um so there was yeah so there was loads of police there was loads of riot vans parked up in the um university um, and also, they had these um, facial recognition uh, vans. Don't get me started on these, but yeah, go on. I'm assuming they're not picking up people who have had... I'm assuming they're picking up people who are banned or who are known to the police. I don't for know. For football-related issues. I don't know. But anyway, Big Brother was watching... Um, so they were, they were quite big vans as well, with these massive cameras on top. There was police everywhere. Um, yeah, there was. I saw a lot of police walking round. Um, it was it was a big deal. It was a big deal. It is, and I think a, it's a local team coming. It's like when Tranmere come. It's it's very similar. I They're, don't remember seeing as much I, police it, presence and riot vans and things like that when Tranmere yeah, came. Yeah, there was a lot. Was there? Yeah, there was quite a bit. Um, I, I, quite interestingly, I'm somebody um, who talks with my hands quite a lot, um, and um, we we got we've obviously had sound <laughs> just issues. Changed the subject. Yeah, I've changed the subject. Uh, just to, just to interject, I've I've um, I you know we've been told something about uh, about the mics and about our potential. favorite steward at the game. Favorite steward. I have never seen Sean talk with her hands and wave them across so much I never. in the whole time that we've done it, <laughs> except for now, since we have been told to not do that. Quite interesting. I think it's embedded in your head that you shouldn't be doing it. I'm like a petulant child. You are. It's like you're directing in an aeroplane. It is. You are waving your arms about so much. So if the sound does go off on this episode, Sean's it is fault. my fault. So I do apologise. So yeah, the Shrewsbury fan. Keep going, yeah. Yeah, keep waving Sorry, their arms. I can't help it. So we've talked about the riot police and yep. all that jazz. Um, so we got to the um, the game. Uh, sorry, the, the game. The What do you call it? The race course. Oh my God, my brain went then. Um, I'm really conscious about my hands now. Not that conscious because you're doing it yeah, quite no. a lot. I'm going to hold my phone so I don't move my hands. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, <laughs> we got to the, we got to the uh, race course about quarter to two. Um, and there was just rucks of people outside the turf like there usually is. The atmosphere seemed really just great. It was. It was, uh, yeah. It, it, the, the, but I, I think, um, I've got to be honest, I think the atmosphere has been great all season. because we're I, <laughs> I don't think that um, the atmosphere particularly ramped up on Saturday because it was a derby. I think it's as... N loud, noisy as it's been all the way through yeah. this season. I I think w that as a fan base, it's been stepped up. Yeah, and I didn't feel that Saturday. It Saturday was loud, but I felt that was as it's been for every game this season. We we me my mum and Alfie we all went um, and sat outside as soon as we got to the race course because it was absolutely boiling and we just w I just wanted to sit down to be honest um, and there was quite a lot of Shrewsbury fans already in the stands because I'm assuming they usher them in quite early yes. to save any issues um, and I was concerned there was just over 1200 uh, Shrewsbury fans at the game on Saturday and I was concerned that they were going to be a little bit louder than us but I didn't. I didn't need to worry because there was noise. They were never going to be loud. Well, against those. twelve thousand odd yeah. Wrexham fans. Um, but yeah, we were loud from the start. Um, so yeah, it was. I just love. I just absolutely love going to the race course. And if you haven't had chance to get to the race course yet, because I know obviously t ticket issues and stuff like that. But if you do get the chance, honestly, a home game is nothing. There's nothing better in this world than going to a home game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, away game's great, you know, because we're all, like, in one stand. But going to the race course, it's just something else. And I I just absolutely love it. Yeah, it is, it's great at the moment. Um, no place for Andy Cannon in the match day squad. Um, that was because he was injured, though, I think, at the, at the uh, uh, last game. Yeah, but Phil did make a point uh, prior, uh, during the week. He said everyone's available. Um, so... Uh, oh, right, know, okay. So, um... You know, I, I, he didn't mention any sort of outstanding injury issues. He said everyone was available. Okay. So I, I think 
perhaps Andy hadn't trained all week. Never mentioned that he hadn't trained, but I think it was a, a case of okay, you know, let's let let's switch it up a little bit. Uh, Rathbone came in. Um, I, I think possibly it was the only way he was going to get in that team because Andy was playing so well, which does seem like a crazy statement given <laughs> how much we we paid for him, record signing. Do and you it, think he, watching the game on Saturday, do you think he was worth the record signing figure? Yes. I thought You he, loved him, didn't you? I did, I really liked yeah, him. I liked, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought he was really good. Um, where I, I'm sort of struggling to see, I love Andy, uh, but I, I think there's, there's something about a player who has played at a higher level and done well-ish mm -hmm. at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And I just think there's something extra to their game. And they just seem to pop up in places on the pitch. It, it just They just seem to be in the right place at the right time all the time. And and he did. That's, that's the thing I noticed about him, you know, where... The play broke down. You'd have Dobbo was in there, and he was, you know, he was he was always in the right place. But Rathbone was never far away either. You yeah. know, when when things were breaking down, he was there, and we were winning second balls, and he was. He, he, it just felt like he was always in the right place. I love Andy, and I love the way the energy that Andy brings. Uh, but perhaps positionally. Andy isn't quite as good as what I saw Ollie was mm. on Saturday. Loads of people may well disagree with that. Just my observation. I just felt positionally he was he was better. Um, I'm not saying he's a better player than Andy. Just from what I observed yeah. on Saturday, I you know I can mm. see why we paid the money for him. Um, moving forward, who's going to play? I don't know. But I, 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 I reckon it's going to be about rotation, to be honest, because we know that Andy can play with uh, Dobson. We know he can play with Evans. Um, you know, it's and obviously now we know that Rathbone plays really well with uh, with Dobson. Um, I think on Saturday, I couldn't. I don't think I could fault anybody's game on Saturday. No, I don't think so. Every like you know, you always come away and go, mm, yeah, well he wasn't that great. Did he? That was you know, but everybody played well as a team, like you you know, you, you want them to Actually do. You want them to do. Well no, I know, but some footballers are out for themselves, aren't they? But the, as a collective, our team are just like like we've we've mentioned like last week and probably the week before, um our team's like really tight and really solid and yeah. Yeah, I think we're I think we're lucky. Yeah, Paul was back on the bench, which is really good to see. I think his fitness is probably there now. There are thereabouts. There thereabouts. Yeah, and I think it's possibly just a bit of sharpness. Um, we'll yeah. we'll talk a bit more about Paul a little bit later, but I think that just a little bit of sharpness that you you only really get from game time. That you can you know you can train and train and train. And, you know, your fitness can be there. And I think it probably is for him now. And it's just about that little bit of match day sharpness, I think, um, uh, for me. JJ was back on the bench, which yeah. was nice to see. I'm guessing JJ would made it to the bench because of that whole midfield rotation. Um, in the sort of Cannon Rathbone position, your back up to that position is JJ. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so with Cannon not being in the match day squad, you bring JJ in as your backup to to, yeah. to Ollie if you want to make a change later yeah. on. So it was really nice seeing him back on the bench as well. Uh, McLean started, um, although um, he didn't train all week. Uh, James McLean, so he uh, he had a problem uh, with his foot. Oh. So he needed a. You would um, never have guessed watching him on Saturday. He had a painkilling injection. Uh, uh, in it, so okay. um, so that is um, that's why you probably couldn't tell. It was uh, floating on air. His foot was floating on <laughs> air. Yeah, his foot was high as a kite. No, yeah, he had a he had a painkilling injection in oh, it. I could do with one of them in my hip. You you had one. Oh, is I, that what that is? That is what that is. Oh, that's horrendous. I feel sorry for you, James. Yes. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and it didn't really do you any good either, did it? So mm. um, it obviously did him some good. Yeah, didn't train all week. Um, uh, from what I heard, it, he basically went to Phil and go, look, I'm playing. Uh, Don't and, argue with McLean. No, and, and I think <laughs> and Phil's gone, yeah, all right okay. then. Okay. All right then, James. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. Okay, James. <laughs> okay, James. 
Yeah, but I think, you know, obviously he's captain now, so he, he's got to have a little bit of a dynamic and relationship with Phil where he can go and he can be honest and going, look, it's not right. I, I You know, I don't think I should be playing. Uh, Phil's going to play him every game. Let, let, let's just put that out there. Now, he's captain. He's not going to drop him no. unless he needs to. I think it's a testament to how fit James is anyway. However, can I just interject? You, of course you can. Um, you're saying that he won't, he won't get dropped, but um, last season, Luke Young was the captain and he didn't get much game time. That, that... But Luke wasn't a psychopath, was he? So... <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a bit no, hard. No, 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 no. I, I just, you know, James is definitely, he's someone who's going to play every game. Yeah. And he's someone that Phil is going to want to well, play I said, Yeah, game, so. I said to my mum, I said, do you know what? I said, we were watching the lads warming up, like you do. Um, it's nice. Um, and I said to my mum, I said, even though James McLean is, I think I've said this before, even though he's one of the older players... He is probably the fittest one out there. I would say so. He is just, he's just, you know, if you follow him on Instagram or whatever, he is constantly in the gym um, and he's just, yeah, he's just, he's just fit. Yeah. He no, is, I don't mean fit as in foie. He is, he's like a machine, isn't he? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you always want someone like that. And, and I think he thrives on that sort of big match day, especially a local derby. He, he would have wanted to play and, and that's, why, that's why he did, ultimately. I think we were at it. First whistle, we were, we were right on it on Saturday. Um, we're going to come on to talk about that. One of our questions a little bit later in the show talks about that a little bit. Um, but every game this season, we have been sort of flat out from the, yeah. from the first whistle. Um, we've got the press right, right from the get-go. We've known when we're pressing, when we sort of transition into not pressing so much and letting them have a little bit of the ball. I, we, it's been, we've been great at... Everything that we've done in that area, every game this season, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I've been I've been really impressed. Um, you know, because Phil always has his doubters in the sense of I can't it, believe they've he's, they, yeah. yeah, but I think a lot of the time it it bleeds into the fan base from. Um, from fans of other clubs mm -hmm. who have sort of got, you know, when we were in the National League and we had a little bit of a wobble, people are going, oh, look, Phil will never deviate. You know, he used to manage us at blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, yeah, and us, he managed it. He won't change. He won't do this. He's and it sort of bleeds school. in, yeah, old school, bleeds into the fan base a little bit and people start to yeah. worry. We had the same thing in League Two. We had the same thing when we were starting in League One. But... As a manager, he keeps setting up his team tactically perfect. And, you know, he is getting the best out of them players. So, you know, for me, there's no doubt in my mind that he's the, still the right man for the job and will be for a long time to come I for me. I love Parkey. He's, uh, there's some, there were some stats going around about Parkey. Um, and I was going to make a note of them. And could I find them again? No. Oh. But they were, they were really quite good. They were really quite good. They were really quite good. There was there's some really good stats going around at the moment regarding Wrexham. I tell you, I tell you one stat. Um, since the start of the 2021 season, um, uh, from the top five leagues, Wrexham have accumulated the most points out of any team in the top five leagues uh, in England. So that that's a good stat. That is very good. It's is very that including? Good is that just in the EFL or is that including the Premiership? Top five leagues. Top oh yeah, five of course, leagues. yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Did you call it the Premiership then? Possibly. Mm, I'm showing my age a little bit there, aren't I? Yeah, it was. It was a long time. When, was ago. It, when did it change the Premier League? Uh, it's been the Premier League since the start, and for a very small period, for like a season, they changed it to the Premiership, um, and then they changed it back to the Premier League. So. Uh, Okay. There we go. Uh, look, the first chance of the game fell to said James McLean. Um, he rifled the shot. I thought it was in, to be fair. Hit the bar. Yeah. Bounced away. Uh, but it, it was that sort of bright start. We looked like we were, you know, we were pressing. We, we were meant going, war. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we did mean business, I think. That's the one I, I just said we meant war. I meant business. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first goal came courtesy of Ollie. 
Uh, which, you know, we talked about this last week. Whatever Stephen said to him seems to be working at the I, moment. I just, whatever. I would love the same advice from from uh, Stephen Fletcher. Yeah, just in our personal lives. Yeah. That, would, that would be great. And then I can <laughs> run across the pitch and give him a hug as well because I get a promotion in work or something like that. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Um, you're, but, you're not getting a promotion in work. Thanks. Well, they don't give promotions out where you work. OK. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he scored the first one. The ball went all the way from the right-hand side. Barney dribbled it across the pitch. I think it went to Lee. Out to McLean. McLean crossed it in. Horrible little area. Uh, Ollie sort of just held his run a little bit. And yeah. I think that might be a little bit of advice where Ollie was always the sort of player that was not bull in the china shop, but get in you know, get into the box, get into that danger area. And I just noticed on Saturday when everyone, the, the whole play was moving towards the goal, he just took a step and, and just sort of drifted back a yeah. little bit. Ball found his way to him. Um, I think it's been described as a tapping by many. It's a little bit more than a tapping. He had to do a bit more with it than just put it in. You know, he had to control it. Ball had travelled the long way out from the wing. Thought he did really well. But I'm... I'm happy with Ollie at the moment. Um, I think he's doing. I think yeah. he's doing really well. Um, yeah, I think so too. I think, I, I, yeah, like it must. It must have been the advice that um, Stephen Fletcher, because ever since he's had that advice, he's kind of really, you know, he's a good footballer anyway. But he seems to have stepped it up a notch, and yeah. he's like, he is. Yeah, he's just there. There are some still. There are some balls which he's just. He's not quick enough to get. Um, like the long balls, I think he's not quick enough to get the long balls um, from like, you know. He's got a bit of pace on it. He does have a bit of pace, but I just think he, he lacks that little bit, of, little bit of speed that some other players might have. Maybe. Um, but don't get me wrong, he is, he's really, yeah. I think Oli Palmer has definitely stepped up. Don't know what, it, it's got to be the advice from Fletcher because I, I just can't think what else it could be. Um, so yeah, I was impressed with Oli. To be fair, I've been impressed with Oli pretty much from the start of the season. Yes, yeah, he's been he's been very good, I think, this season. Um, he is one of three Wrexham players on two goals. No? Name the other two. It's not, I'm just not throwing the quiz out there early, but can you name... Just two goals. Just two goals, yes. Well, it's not Mario, because he's got more than two. Yes. He's on three now. He is on three, yes. Three. I hope that's one of the quiz questions. It's not. Ah, oh, damn. Um, let's have a listen. Let's have a listen. Let's have a think. Uh, I'm going to say Elliot Lee... Elliot Lee's got two, yeah. Oh, there's more than one? Yeah, three, I said. Oh, did you? <laughs> um, Max, uh, Max McLean, I was going to say Maximilian. that. Maximilian. <laughs> no, Max Maximilian Kluwer. Max. Max, it is Max, yeah, there's the other one. Oh, Do I get a point for that? No, absolutely not. It's not. This isn't the quiz. I was just asking. I just threw it out there. Do you, do you know? That's quite impressive, I think. Yes, yeah, so we've got Jack on three, and then we've got Ollie, Max, and uh, Elliot Lee on two, which is decent, decent, decent yeah. start. Um, Ollie had a chance to make it 2 0. Sorry, I'm, we're going to have to just start calling him Palmer, aren't we? Oh, yeah. But they had the other. We've OP. got the other. OP. OP. Um, yeah, we'll call him OP. OP and all. Opie and all. Opie and all. Ollie Rathbone. Yeah, I know. Opie and all. No, I don't like that. Sounds like a cartoon character. It does look it's on like a cartoon. <laughs> anyway. Palmer. Ball, ball in from the left from McLean. Uh, landed to Ollie. I thought he was just going to tuck it away. Uh, in all fairness, I can't remember the Shrewsbury defender that actually blocked it, but... Um, yeah, he got a block in uh, last second, uh, cleared away. Um, yeah, which I, I was a little bit, a little bit gut gutted about. Um, great fast move forward, another ball in from the left, um, and you know I, I started to realise um, I'm going to jump forward a little bit here because uh, James McLean got man of the match. Okay, on Saturday, mm. um, and I, we were a little bit like. Um, no. Oh, I don't, I'm not sure it was him. You know, it was when I was watching, I, because I analysed the highlights um, and then I obviously make notes, you know, methodical sort of notes mm -hmm. about, the, about the game. I don't, I just come on. Yeah, Sean just comes on. <laughs> I but just come on. what I noticed while I was making the notes, it was ball in from James McLean. Oh, ball whipped in from the left, cross from the left. And everything seemed to go through James McLean yeah. on Saturday. And it, I think it's only when I was watching the highlights back and when I was making the notes that I realised this of just 
how many times it, 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 he was like a magnet for the ball on Saturday and everything went down the left. Yeah. Even when it was out on the right with Barney, like with the first goal, Barney dribbled into the middle and it ended up out on the left with James. So I think I understood a little bit more It's why. interesting though, because the sponsors of the man of the match from, yes, uh, from Saturday's game against Shrewsbury were exactly the same as the Reading game and they both chose James McLean. So for me, I think, I think I think Man of the Match is a bit of a farce at the moment. I don't think it's being awarded to the right people. But um, may, maybe not, but I, I think if you watch the highlights back, you might you might change your mind a little bit. I made some of that just from the commentary and yeah. the highlights. Ball from the left, cross from the left. McLean puts the ball into the middle. McLean, McLean crosses it in. Mark Griffiths even said in commentary, I don't think McLean has ever had a game where he's had so much time to repeatedly get the ball in the box. No. And they were all good quality balls into the box. Um, and yeah, it, so it's something I wanted to bring in because we were a little bit, mm, I'm not sure why that's happened. But I think if you do watch it back, you might get a better, clearer idea of, of the reason why. They, when they win Man of the Match, they win the, the match ball, don't they? they I'm, not, I'm not sure you can say they win it, but they... They, they get given it. They, they claim it, yes. I wonder how... No, Man of the Match, did you say then? Yeah. No, sorry, that's a hat-trick. If you get a hat-trick, you get the match ball. Sorry, I was just agreeing with you for a statement that wasn't correct. They get the but... ball for something, though. Ha yeah, ha no, sorry, they get something for Man of the Match. They get, like, a little award. A little trophy or something, yeah, probably. Oh, he's, well, he's got two so far from this season. Yeah, well done. <laughs> uh, look, um, Palmer was involved uh, in the second goal as well. He won the ball back uh, on the halfway line. Barney took it. Um, and I think we'd have got a free kick there, but the, mm. the ref played on. Um, I did have a few issues with the ref on Saturday. Oh, he was terrible. I didn't think he was great. He I, was did, I didn't at all. He loved the whistle. Um, I think in this instance, he let the play go. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of times he could have let the play go and he didn't. And it, it always seemed to be on the side of the Shrewsbury players. No, not necessarily. It was, it was the other way as well. And it just, yeah, yeah it, was, it did my head in a little bit. But... Ollie won the ball back. Uh, Barney went on a little nice little mazy run. Mazy run? A mazy run, yeah. A mazy run? What's a mazy run? A oh, a maze. A mazy run. Right. That is very much a football term that maybe you haven't come I've across as yet. I've never, I don't think I've ever heard that in a, in a, just a normal everyday conversation. You will not, I can guarantee you, you will not have heard that in a normal everyday that is very much a football term did you see Alfie he went on a mazy run <laughs> yeah no no okay it's, okay I like it yeah fake fo there you go see look like you've been it. watching football for a few years now you're still picking up new terminology I am still learning every day's a school day he went on a mazy run okay and he cut inside and we thought he was going to shoot Laid it off to Elliot Lee, lovely little slotted, um, um, sort of almost passed it into the into the back of the net. It was great. So for Ollie's second goal of the season. Mm -hmm. um, and a couple of minutes after that, we got a little bit worried because I think it was literally two minutes after Elliot had scored. He made a tackle in the middle, which I haven't seen a replay of. I'm not going to ask anyone who was watching on iFollow. Uh, because I know you wouldn't have seen it e either because it was in the first half. But um, it, it, his foot looked really high. A lot of the, the, the Shrewsbury fans looked really it angry about it. It was at their end, it. wasn't it? It was. Uh, the, the Shrewsbury players seemed quite angry. And we were a bit worried for a second. We were like, oh, what's going to happen here? He just got a yellow. Yeah. Uh, praise the Lord for that because that I'm just, you know, I was a little bit worried in that moment that he'd, he'd got a bit carried away with it. He was a little bit amped up after that as well. You um, were like, yeah, get. he needs to come off now. He's, he's yeah. Yeah, and I was a little bit worried that yeah. he was just a bit too up for it. And, um, yeah, I thought one misplaced tackle here or there, um, you know, we're missing him for a game. Um, so Which is, could be detrimental. It, it, yeah, it? massively so. So I was a little bit worried. But 2-0 um, at half-time, comfortable. Yeah. I would say yeah. the, the only chance I think Shrewsbury had was that header. Uh, they had a header and it looked like a decent header, but Arthur just 
caught it, and it was he just put like his hand up like that and went, "Oh, uh, yeah." And it, just it was, another day in the office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was sort of like that. It was it. He made it look a little bit more routine than I think it was, but yeah. it, it, you know, it didn't. That was the only time that I, I sort of felt that um, we'd been troubled ish maybe I, even though we didn't really seem that yeah trouble. i was talking to steve at half time so tappy he owns uh rex and train revival yeah uh we were talking about um sort of the midfield a little bit and and what we were th- what we thought of of rathbone how good we looked um and he was saying how how strange it was that Based on what we knew from the end of last season, to think that pa- your next to, to to perhaps think <laughs> that there'd be no place for George Evans in this team mm. it is is crazy, really. But I I can't see a way he's getting in. No, he did describe him. He did. <laughs> Steve did describe him. He said he's a bit a little bit like a crab. In the sense of, so everything sort of went sideways yeah. a little bit with with uh, with George Evans. Whereas Dobson is, I keep saying it, and it just feels like I'm rehashing the same stuff all the time, but it's just everything's forward with him. There are sideways passes, there are the odd backwards pass, but his first instinct is turn forward, forward. let's get the ball forward. Mm -hmm. And I think if you watch the highlights back, I would say to anyone, just watch the highlights back and just watch everything that we do during that build-up, there is a forward pass from George Dobson mm-hmm. when potentially there is an easier sideways or backwards pass. There is a forward pass there that he's looking at. And I don't think that people can... Uh, some people will understand how important that is uh, because the easy thing to do when you play in George Dobson's position is to look sideways and to look backwards. We it did is quite, the easiest thing in the world to do. I think we did quite a lot of that in the National League. And League 2 probably a yeah, lot of the baby. time. We, it was Whereas a... now, that's not our game anymore. Mm. It's get it to him and let him push forward. I don't think forward. that sort of uh, that sort of tact kind of works in... Um, in, as, as you progress in the leagues, to be honest. Maybe not. No, but there are plenty of teams who do still play sideways, sideways yeah, and backwards. So, but not us. Uh, um, look, uh, as I said, 2-0 at half-time. Um, and, um, we went to do a half-time review. Yeah. Um, and we were on the Wi-Fi. Um, and, but it, was, it, it just wouldn't work. So I put a note on... I put a little comment on Twitter just you know, to say, unfortunately, we'll be doing a... Um, a halftime review, and we got some comments back, <laughs> basically saying, "At least you get to watch the match." <laughs> I'm in such, such, such and such, and uh, we can't even. We haven't even been able to watch the first half, so we are aware of the issues from iFollow, um, yeah. and we wish we could do something about it for you, but unfortunately, we can't. I was. I tell you, I was most gutted for um, Chris and Adrian, yeah. who do the, the Two Beards podcast. Um, they do it from sort of. I, I'm not very good with Australian geography, but almost like opposite ends of Australia, let's say. Um, And they'd never actually met. They do a podcast together every week, never actually met. Um, And they met for in person for the first time on Saturday. uh, And they were sitting down to watch the game together. And unfortunately, for the first hour, Mm. they weren't able to watch the game. So I was gutted. I was gutted for everyone, but I think more for them than anyone else that they'd, you know, they'd made the effort to get together for the first time. And it was sort of marred a little bit by not being able to watch the game. But I can guarantee that Adrian and Rousey definitely uh, made up for it. Made, yeah. Yeah. I think they made a night of it. I don't think it was a wasted journey. No. Look, um, we've we've made a decision. We've got to a decision now. We're talking about that the the halftime reviews don't happen for us. Um, and we are a little bit gutted. We used to like doing the halftime yeah. reviews. We have made the decision to scrap them completely. We won't be doing any halftime reviews from now on um, because it's just too much hassle, to be honest, of you know not doing them. It's just too much hassle trying to get on. We seem to spend... And it's about timing as well because, you know, you spend sort of five, six, seven minutes trying and it's like, doesn't work, reconnect. And then you're sort of worried, well, even if we can connect, what's the connection going to be like? What's the signal going to be like? Is it just going to cut us off? And are people going to be able to understand us? And then you sort of get 
seven, eight, nine minutes in, you, th you sort of think, well, even if this does connect, the lads are going to be coming out, back out for the second half in a few minutes, so it doesn't really work. So we're going to switch it up. We are still going to do two live streams on a match day, uh, but we have decided that we're going to do a pre-game and a post-game. Yes. Instead of the half-time when you're in the ground, um, we're going to do a pre-game when we're walking up to the ground. Um, we're just going to change our routine a little bit. Um, so we park, as somebody uh, did ask us on our live stream on Saturday, where are you parked? Chester. <laughs> because we were walking for so long. Um, but I think we're going to start going to the games a touch later um, so that we'll park up. We'll do our pre-game uh, prediction videos as we normally do and we'll get them on social media. Mm -hmm. And then we will start our, our YouTube live stream as we're walking up to the match um, with a plan to get to the ground just after two o'clock uh, so that we can also, as part of the live stream, discuss the lineups that come out as well. We normally get to the ground about half one. Um, we've sort of realised that maybe a little bit early because we are sort of standing around, sitting around, waiting for the game to start. So we're going to change our routine. So as of... I didn't know about that. Uh, I, yeah, I've made this all myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, for any home games, we, we're going to have a, a sort of 20-minute pre-game show and a 20-minute post-game show at full time. So I look forward to doing them. Um, it's the best thing we could have done, yeah. I think. Well, we know we're going to get a signal where we can use our um, yeah, our data and stuff like that. So. Yeah, um, first chance of the second half. I forgot we were talking about the game. Uh, first chance, <laughs> we seem to have gone off on a wild tangent. First chance of the second half, ball in from the left. Mm. Again, McLean, stooping header from Marriott, which was pretty decent, to be honest. He managed to get it on target. Um, uh, I, if I'm honest, I, it, Jack ran tirelessly all game. And I, the one thing I wanted from the second half was him to get a goal, uh, because yeah. he did, he did everything that that you would want a striker playing that sort of role to do. You know, he did he did all of it, yeah. and I, I was really happy for him. He got his reward just before the hour. Um, I think you can say that their goalkeeper. He made a hash he of it, didn't he? He made a bit of a bad judgment on that ball. He did. But yeah. look, every keeper does that from, from time to time. So I'm not going to throw him under the bus too much. Uh, Owen O'Connell sort of won the ball in defence, brought it forward, ball over the top. Shrewsbury player got his foot to it, bounced into the middle. I think it was the ball over the top was coming a little bit quicker. Uh -huh. The keeper started to make his way out. The defender stuck his leg out, changed the direction of the ball and took a bit of the pace off it as well. So all Mar of a sudden... Marriott got it on his chest. And... Yeah, I think the keeper was sort of... He was already halfway when the pace was taken off the ball, and I think that's what did him, really, yeah. and it looked worse than it was. Yeah. Um, you know, he chased it down, he, he chested it around the keeper, putting it into an empty net. Great goal. Um, I think what the goal did was it took me back to the question of can Mullin and Marriott play together when uh, the, which was asked to us last week. Uh -huh. And the reason it took me back to that is that goal felt very much like a Mullin-esque sort of goal. Chasing it down, not giving up, and getting your reward and taking it around the keeper and putting it in, it just reminded me of Paul, very much so. So to answer the question, can they play together... I think that proved that they can't because you can't have similar. you can't have two players doing that. You know, you've got to have one which is you know the way that we play strong can hold it up and maybe sit slightly deeper, and then you've got this one who's a little bit like a whippet who will chase everything down and he will go for everything, which is what Jack did and he got his reward for yeah. that. But like I say, it felt very Mullin esque to me that it was. And I just couldn't imagine two players on the pitch doing the same thing. No, I don't think it would work. No, I, no. I, I no. Which is sad, really, because uh, I, I'm re I really I rate Jack Marriott. I do as well. I, I, and I, I'm just not sure where we're going, if I'm honest, where, it, where it's going to go. Look, half an hour to go. We felt like there was more goals in it. You had your prediction right, and you were going, I'm happy with this, I'm happy with it staying like this. But I just felt really confident that you weren't going to win. 
your prediction because I thought half an hour left, we seemed completely in control. Yeah. I just couldn't see. But I did. Uh, yeah, I know. I just couldn't see. We, we, you know, we had Mullin off the bench. You've got another 20 minutes. And he just carried on the good work that Jack had been doing during the game. Uh-huh. He had one decent chance. Oh, I was good for him. And it, this is what comes back to the sharpness I was talking about before. Mm. You know, a little bit more time, he'll get that sharpness back and that'll be in. Yeah. You know, and there'll be no, you know, he, he just sort of tried to flick it with his right. Maybe he might have been better taking it with his left. Mm. Uh, and uh, it just went past the post. But, yeah, uh, no more goals, uh, unfortunately. Sean got a prediction right. Well done. Uh, you did a top of the league post as well, didn't you? Because that puts us... Top ad- of the league. Yeah, admittedly... Not many people played on three Saturday. Te- no, well, six teams played, but three games they were on Saturday. Games. In case anybody wasn't aware of why that was, um, so if a team has, I think we spoke about it last we did. week. If a team has three players called up for international duty, you can make a request to the EFL to get the game postponed. Uh, there's obviously quite a few international players dotted around uh, League One. It happens. There was no Championship games. Only three League One games, and I think pretty much all except for one game went ahead in the in in League Two. So it's obvious, really, the higher you go up the leagues, the more international players that are sprinkled around yeah. that, that that team. So yes, look, champ, it, it sort of rivals at the top of the table. Not many of them played, mm. um, so it, it gives us a chance to go top, which is amazing. Like I said, Sean did a post on X um, saying that we were top of the league. Did a little picture and you go, how good does this look? We had a few comments back. Um, Dean said, looks so good. Guersal Avenue punching and what a ride it is. We can't go up again, surely. Can we? We can. Can we? I'm, I'm feeling, you know, we're five games into the season so far. Yes. I, I think, you know, like you said on the live yesterday... At this moment in time, we look unbeatable. I did say that. And someone said you jinxed it. Yeah, I did say that. I, no, I didn't. No, hang on a minute. Rewind. I didn't say we looked unbeatable. I said at the moment, we look unbeatable at home, is what I actually you did. said. You did. Um, because I think with the crowd, with everything, I th- just think, I feel at the moment, we look unbeatable at home. Mm-hmm. Which I don't think is a b- uh, you know. Like... I don't think that's the worst thing in the world to say. No. But just to clarify what I actually said. But yeah. Yeah. But can we? Can we go up? It's hard to say. I think it say. Is, at this moment in time, I think, you it's know. So I'm, hard, isn't it? I, I'm quite positive, but it is only five games into the season. We've got another 41 games to play. Yeah. Who knows? Um, yeah. Who knows? Look, I, I think, I know why you posted that picture, because it looks nice. It does. But But I, I knew for a fact that you didn't think, oh, this is it, we're top. And I, I knew you didn't think that, but I, yeah, that's why I just asked them what you Oh, want. no, no, yeah, no. I, yeah, it it yeah. just looked nice as, get, you know, yeah. 13 points. Aesthetically on the pleasing. Yeah, to is show. what I meant. Yes. Is what I meant. I think people got that. But yes, yeah. they did. Todd yeah. Cross said, absolutely love it. And Murky Lago said, looks great. It really does. Um, somebody else, Mark uh, Rupwani, said, five games played. Four of those had horrible audio issues for iFollow people. Today, today's game was non-existent to iFollow subscribers until after halftime. Yeah. It's really sad. It the is club, really I sad. think the club is aware of it, but being aware of it and, you know, doing something about it. Is... What can they do, though? That's the question. Uh, well, who knows, but I think they do, do need to sort it out. So. Yeah. Uh, Wrexham FC Boston sent in a question. So it's time to start the debate. Is Wrexham better with Mullen on the bench? He's obviously the best scorer and I love him, but it's an interesting discussion. Of course, this is an unfair question considering he hasn't started a game. Discuss. <sighs> um, it's really hard to imagine us being better without Paul Mullen. That sounds ridiculous to mm. me that sounds does sound like a ridiculous thing to even contemplate although <laughs> uh, at the moment it's going really well so it, i think you're sort of in a scenario similar to the midfield scenario where you're looking at it you go I've got a record signing sitting on the bench i, I can't take andy out because he's playing really well um so it's almost as if you're waiting for Jack to have a bad game 
or for his form to dip a little bit and then go, there we go, we'll stick Paul back in now. Yeah. And then Jack, Jack, Jack never comes back again. Do you not? Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So I don't. I'm not necessarily. He might not. But if you know Mullen does come, it's inevitable. I think he probably will yes, come back in the starting will. eleven. Let's face it. Um, I don't think Marriott will be sidelined completely. I do think that, like what they've been doing with Mullen bringing him on, mm. he will come on to rest Mullen, obviously. Yeah. But once Mullen's back and he's, you know, he's at his full potential as we all know and love him for. Um, I just think. Yeah, I think it's going to be difficult for him. Okay, okay, let's let's shorten it down because I think the the, the thing that the sort of Wrexham FC Boston was was saying mm. is very much: Are we passing it more? Are we being more uh, sort of like inclusive of the whole team, and we're not just playing towards one man yeah. because it's Paul Mullen, mm. uh, which is an interesting point and one I, I, you know, as he said, it's sort of unfair to ask that question. And it's really hard to answer because you just don't know. You know, until Paul starts a game and we see if the whole dynamic of the team changes because he's there, it's really hard to work out, you know, what's what. You'd hope but, it wouldn't change, but no, no, it's you inevitable would. that it probably will slightly. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, perhaps, yeah. you know, and it's really hard to say. Yeah. Here's a question for you then. We're not talking about the Birmingham game, as we've said today, but... Does Jack or Paul start against Birmingham? See, it's, it's a difficult one. But for me, at this moment in time, I love Mullen, but I just think Jack deserves, the, you know, the bigger games like your Birmingham's and stuff. I just think he deserves, I just, I think he deserves to start. I can't see it happening if Mullen's up to scratch. Mm. I don't know. It's an interesting it's... one. I'm not even going to answer because I just don't know. No. I, d I really don't know. And I, I, I'm sort of with you. I know how good Paul is. Yeah. But is he quite there at the moment? I don't know. I think if he was there, he'd have started by now. Maybe? Or am I, or am I wrong there? No, I don't... no. Do you think it's a decision that he's made? Or do you think it's a decision that Parky's gone right, you know... Trait. No, I think it's full on Phil. Yeah. Full on Phil, like that. Full on Phil. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. It's an interesting one. It's one we'll talk. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about it on next week's show in our yeah. uh, sort of build up. I do to the know. I haven't done my. Um, well, I can't because it's it's not on for another week. But I have I've, I've been thinking about my lineup for Birmingham. Mm. Um, I think I think Mullen will start in the Salford 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 game. I think he might as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm a bit torn with my lineup for the Birmingham game. So yeah, I've got a week to kind of think about yes. it though. So. Yes, you do. Um, so uh, a few uh, comments from this last week. Uh, first, happy anniversary to you both. This is from Tam, by the way. Uh, thank you very much, Tam. Um, Hubs and I have been together for 40 plus years and still in love. Being best friends, we make each other laugh. Has a lot to do with it, and I see that in you also. Uh, B, I'm over the moon about Saturday's results. So you must be flying so high. Number three. I'm loving this transfer window. I can't pick a favourite player anymore. So many to choose from. And Quattro, uh, Mo Fowl, the fact that he scored his first league goal at, uh, at the Kairas is so awesome. Like he said, magical. Um, yeah, looking forward to Monday's pod. I really, I tell you what I like, Tam, is the fact that you uh, prefixed each one with a different thing. B, went, number three, Quattro. Yeah, first, B, number three, Quattro. Yeah, Love it. Love it. Yeah, I really do. Um, oh, what, oh, what? So Mike, Mike down, Ma Mike down, Mike down on missing out on Oasis tickets. He said, "Don't worry, there is no way they will play those <laughs> gigs." Hey, do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me. Let's, we, can, we need to stop bringing up Oasis. Yeah, now. as Neo just saw that the club released the long, sh long sleeve shirts. Just cu curious if you guys plan on playing. A little of buying them. Um, I, I, I'll answer this first. I'm going to throw it over to you. Um, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't like a long sh sleeve shirt. I have never liked a long sleeve shirt. When I used to play football back in the day, every shirt that we had was long sleeve. Hated them. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's just not long sleeves. Not for me. When I used to play in a long sleeve shirt, I always used to roll it up to my elbow. Absolutely hated it and never never liked a long sleeve shirt. Um, I, I, it, it seems very 50-50. People, it's like Marmite, I suppose. People either love them or hate them. I, I, I'm not a fan. If I'm perfectly honest, I am not a fan. Over to you, Sean. You, you quite like it, don't I you? I do, but I don't know whether that's because I like it on the players. 
And it looks quite nice. Um, no, I think I like the, I like <laughs> I like the black one. Yeah. And as we are approaching autumn, winter, yeah. and I am the nashest person in this universe, yeah. I um, I would like you to buy me one, please. Oh, right. Okay, that falls on me. Hmm. Why? Why? Because you love me and you like buying me gifts. Okay. Yeah. Look. Uh, yeah. I, I. I. I'm glad they've released them because of all of the people banging on about wanting to buy them. Although I, I won't be. Sham, maybe. Oh, look, by the sounds of it, I will be buying it and just handing it over to you. So we'll wait and see. Uh, Roy, I don't know yet. I haven't made a full decision. Okay, yet, so Roy. Yeah. In the past two to three years, we're always lamenting our slow starts. Late winners are fun, but going into the half two nil up is better. And we haven't been behind it at, at the half in any match. Not even the Sheffield United one. Uh, what do you think? Is there a relationship between the faster build-up play and the better starts to matches? Yeah, I, mm. I, I, th I think so. I like this way of play. St uh, you know, late goals are stressful. They are stressful. Great, though. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's good. But I feel a lot more chilled and relaxed when we're going into the... Uh, into into the half time um, with a goal or two yeah. under our belts. I, I think it. Yeah. For me, nothing better than a last minute winner. No, you you love them. Last I minute do. Winners. I love. I um, to this to you know to this day, the away game at Oldham, um, it still stands up for me as one of the best away games that I've been to. One of not the best by you know the, actually there's quite a few ahead of it, but. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it is up there as an amazing away day. Yeah. But if I break it down, hated the ground, hated where we had to park, couldn't get a drink, couldn't get food, uh, horrible little ground. Um, we were terrible for 85 minutes of that game. I was fuming. I, I was just like, I was ready to walk out. I thought we were terrible. Uh, and we scored two very late goals. <laughs> And still lives up in my mind as what an away day that was. Yeah. So when you break it down, sounds awful. But <laughs> it's still, it is that last, that last minute. It's like each one of the negative things is worth minus one points on your scale. Right. Yeah. Last minute winner plus a hundred. Bang! Right up there, ninety up. It, honestly, it's for as for me, it's one of the best feelings in football i have noticed though because obviously our um you know we uh, most well all the games apart from the, obviously the bottom one where it was a nil nil draw um i feel like your stress levels have been lowered because you haven't you don't sit there biting your nails usually no. if we're going in nil nil or one, you know, we're losing or whatever, you are very nail bitey mm. and you've been quite chilled and not like nail bitey, which okay. is a bonus. Is so it? I think, I, 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 you know, last minute goals are fun when you're already ahead. <laughs> no. Yes. No, I, if you offered me winning a game comfortably 3-0 uh -huh. or yeah. being 1-0 down to the 96th minute and then scoring two goals in the last 50 seconds, I would take that all day long because the excitement level of that is just far bigger mm. for me. But it is nice to have a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks of just chill and yeah, let's just win games nice and easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look. Thank you so much for getting in touch for all your questions and comments. You can continue to do so, uh, sending, sending them in to us. You can get in touch with us on X, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, threads, or you can email us on me, the wife, and wrexhamafc at gmail.com. Not quite sure why I need to look at that. Because cheated that then, is, didn't you? That's literally the name of the show. Yeah. Yeah, you cheated halfway. I did, yeah. Uh, just a quick shout out for the Fantasy uh, EFL League, the me, the wife, and Wrexham AFC League. Currently first is Christian McHale. Yay, Christian. Second is David. Damo Tobin and third is Gareth Jackson. I'm just going to have a quick shout out for somebody uh, who had a great week and that person <laughs> is me. Uh, I, changed, I changed our team up uh, this week. Uh, honestly, I had a fantastic week. I um, You were like a kid at the football. I was. It was amazing. And I even didn't have... A, a, we had a player who didn't play and we still... I was 25th 
in the whole competition for the, for game week five, 25th in the world. That's how good a week I had. I'm surprised you didn't put it on our socials. I know, this. I should have really. I should have, yeah. But I, so I've jumped up all a lot of the leagues yeah. uh, that we're in. Uh, Did you win but, anything? No, but it's... It's great. I had such a good week on it. It was fantastic. You just get the accolade of being yeah. 25th. Yeah, I had uh, 25th in the world. Let's have that. 25th in the world. <laughs> Let's have that. Let's have that, eh? <laughs> um, quick quick talk about the Salford game. Not going to dwell on this because yeah, it's a, it's a stupid, nothing game. It's an EFL Trophy group stage game uh, Tuesday at 7.30. Uh, home at the Stoke Kai Ras. Uh, the only t- we're the only team in the group who haven't played yet. Everyone else has. Uh, their game on Saturday with Fleetwood was postponed uh, due to international call-ups. I think it was the only game in League Two that was actually postponed because of international call-ups. Is uh, that for Fleetwood or Salford? Fleetwood. Fleetwood. Yeah. Uh, last game was uh, a one. Uh, the, their last game uh, was a one-nil uh, win on the second of September against uh, uh, MK uh. Dunsia. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> They're currently nineteenth in League Two after a win, two draws, and a loss. So they are owned by the class of '92, which is Giggs, Skulls, Nevilles, the Nevilles, the Nevilles, the Nevilles, yeah. Gary and Phil. Um, Butt and Beckham. Um, their last game was a 3-1 loss in League 2 in February away at the Peninsula That's State. our last our game. Our last game. Why don't you put that? Because I know what I'm saying. Well, I don't. So, anyway. La- I, hey, I tell you what you could do. <laughs> Read the notes beforehand and then ask any questions before we start recording. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be fun Instead then, of just rocking it? up and reading out. Um, our last home game against them was 3-2 win where we... Where we won two... What? Where, oh, sorry. Where we were 2 nil down and came back to win. Th- yeah, that was a good game, to be fair. Yeah, we scored two goals in 50... Five seconds. Yeah, right at the end of the game. Right at the end of the game, see? Two goals. Right at the end of the game. Two goals in 55 seconds. How exciting was that? You literally just turned to me and said, that was a good game, that one, eh? <laughs> literally, because of the late goals. Yeah. Prediction? I... I, I Okay, I'm going to go for prediction, but I have not put this down on our thing because I don't care. Well, it needs to go down because we're doing a prediction. Oh. Okay, well, I'll do a little sub sub tab for... No, you can just go on the predictions. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go 3-1. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Yeah. I'm going to go 3-0 again. Okay, I'm going to go 2-1 Wrexham. Couldn't care less if we lose six 0 If I'm perfectly honest, I, I really don't. You I don't get any points. Having from said it. that, scrap that. I, I do care because I want the lads who do play to get some decent minutes in them. I think. I think Paul might play. Mo Fowl? I think Mo Fowl might he play. He is a beast. Dan Scar, Lewis Brunt, yeah, uh, Callum Burton, George Do- uh, George uh, Evans if he's fit. yeah, Ravon. He can he can Ravon. he can have a little run out as well. Yeah. yeah, I think there's lots of players who need some minutes. I'd I'd stick JJ in there. Uh-huh. He didn't get a lot of minutes on Saturday. Yeah. Get him in there. I think there's I think it's a good opportunity to get minutes into people. Could be uh, more than three goals to be fair. It could be. Uh, quick shout out for Dragon Chat. It's a mental health peer support group. They run two calls on Zoom. Uh, one is on Monday at 8pm and that is for women. And one is at 7pm and that is on Thursday and that is for men. Um, the best thing to do is follow Steve Lloyd on Twitter, which is at Dragon Chat WXM FC. Quiz time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did I get five out of five last week? Or you four did not. Out of five? <sighs> He did not. Let's let's stop trying to claim that early doors. I did well, though. Uh, yes, you did well. But just not Good five enough. out of five. Okay, <laughs> quiz. Okay. As you're aware, one of the Shrewsbury players is the son of TV presenter Lucy Alexander. But what is that player's full name? I can't remember. Alex Winterton. Alex Winterton. That's... I know it starts with an S. The surname. Okay, that's wrong, but okay. Is it? Yeah. I don't know then. It's Leo Castledine. Or Sasseldine, maybe, if you wanted to call well, it I knew that. it had an S somewhere. <laughs> well done. I'm not giving you a point for that. No. Okay. Saturday was the first time this season we had over 50% possession. Uh huh. But who was the last team we had over 50% possession against in a league game? Was it Stockport, Crewe, Forest Green, or Crawley? Forest Green. That is incorrect. It was actually Crewe. 
Second to last game of the season. Do you know what? I we was, won three now. I was going to say crew, but then I thought, nah. It was go for the wrong one, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we picked up three yellow cards in the first half on yeah. Saturday. But how many did Shrewsbury get in the second half? Two. Incorrect. That was also three. They got one in the first half and three in the second half. Number four. Planning on getting one right this week or just going to crack on with none, yeah? Yeah, all right. Not looking good, is it? Not really. Uh, number four. We know that James McLean got man of the match on Saturday, uh -huh. but three Wrexham players got a higher rating than him on sofa score. Name one of them. Elliot Lee. It was Elliot Lee, yeah. I uh, saw that. Do you want to... When? Sofa score. Oh, right. I thought you meant on the iPad then. No, on Dare sofa you. score. Do you want to name the other two? I'll give you some more points if you can name the other two because oh. you only get two guesses though. Okay. Jack Marriott. No. Oh, okay. I give up. One more? Max Leeworth. No. Ryan Barnett and Owen O'Connell. Okay, the local derby is done. Yep. But when is the reverse fixture? Is it the 14th of December, the 18th of January, the 12th of February or the 16th of March? 12th of February. It is not the 12th of February, it is the 18th of January. So you have had one of the worst weeks you've had for ages. I got Elliot Lee right though. You got one, yeah. So. Well done. One's better than none. Yes, but not as good as two, three, four <laughs> or five. Oh, these quizzes are just going to be the death of me. Yeah, look. I hate them. Please do not remember. Do not remember. No, please remember. Sorry. Please do not forget, forget. <laughs> that our next episode comes out a day early on Sunday at 6pm. Put it in your diary. That's episode 115, not this one that we're recording as we speak. Well, no, because they'd have to be listening to this one to know what... Oh, what, yeah. What are you talking about, you <laughs> absolute lunatic? Yep, sorry. So, our next episode is out on Sunday, 6pm, one day early so that we can focus a little bit on the Birmingham game. We've got some guests on. It's going to be, it's going to be a hoot, isn't it? I think we always have a hoot. Yeah, we do. So uh, join us then. Thank you for joining us this week. Um, have a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.